Hey everybody! Well, seeing as how I've done videos about some of my favorite anime characters, I thought that I would take a trip to the opposite end of the spectrum. Now, I was going to do a top 10 most hated anime characters video that was going to be purely about characters that I hated, and there was going to be no this character is at number X because da 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 da. But I decided a couple days back that I would change things. So, I am going to split that original video into two and do them separately. And the first one that I will do is my top 10 most hated anime women. Now keep in mind, some of these characters I don't necessarily hate, there are just things about them that I disagree with. As such, they will be at the bottom of the list, and the ones I do hate will be at the top. I hope this doesn't cause any confusion to people watching this. Right, time to get cracking, and let's hope I make it out of this mentally intact. Oh, just one last thing. If you see a favorite character of yours here, please don't bitch at me about it. It's my list. Number 10. Again, I don't actually hate this girl, it's just that Toru Ichi is quite frankly, a bitch. She was one of my favorite anime girls for quite some time, but when I rewatched A Channel a few months back, my liking for her took a bit of a nosedive for two reasons. Her mistreatment of Yuko and her overprotective, for lack of a better word, possession of Rin. Now I know that Rin's personality would kind of warrant this behavior, and I do know that Toru fancies Run, but seriously, threatening the male students with a baseball bat just because they're talking to her is completely ridiculous. If you're the kind that finds those scenes funny, that's completely alright. But I have to question why nobody informs the teachers about this. That kind of behavior should not be allowed. Those boys have just as much right to chat with Run as the main girls. It's one thing to be concerned about possibly losing your love interest, particularly if she's a woman scatterbrain, but Toru takes things way too far. And also, one small misunderstanding causes her to view Yuko, who is completely harmless, as her enemy for the entire show? I simply have no words for that. Anyway, Tor is at 10 because I did favorite her at one time, and I will admit that the scene with the chair is still pretty funny when I think back to it. But seriously, Toru, lighten up! At number 9 is someone similar to Toru, she has a scatterbrain friend and tries to protect her from a guy who fancies her. I don't hate her. In some ways, I kind of like her. But Midori Tokiwa really needs to cut Mochizo some slack. Tamako is his friend as well, and he does not deserve the treatment Midori gives him. Now, she is a good friend, I'll give her that but she really does not need to be so protective of Tamako. She's not that scatterbrained. And also, Midori is a bit of a bitch personally, though credit where credit's due. Seeing her break down in Tamako's arms because she felt like she'd failed her friends by not being able to think of anything for their performance did kind of tug at the old heartstrings. I'm putting Midori ahead of Toru because although they are similar in a few ways, I don't see myself ever favoriting her. Making number 8 is the personality switching high school teacher. As a teacher doing teachery things, she's okay, but when she's not being a teacher, that's where my problem with her begins. At number 8 is Sawako Yamanaka. Let me try and break this down into two parts. Like Satome from Pony Pony Dash, Sawako is a good teacher. 
She clearly takes her job seriously, and she's quite supportive towards people. Even though I can't off the top of my head think of anything in particular that she shows support for. And she's not too bad looking. She's not a stunning beauty like Mio and Mugi, but she's not too far off. Now as for why she's on this list, while she may be good when she's doing her job, when she's, let's say, off duty, my dislike for her shows. The one major problem with her? The way she looks for any excuse to assault and traumatize Mio and Azusa. I simply do not find any of it funny. She clearly refuses to see how much those two hate being put through her hijinks. Sawako, why is it you have to use Mio or Asusa to model your outfits? You have three other girls you could use. Or better yet, use yourself as a model. Another thing I don't particularly like is when she goes into death devil mode. Seeing her like that just creeps me out. These two things might have placed her higher, but since we don't see them too often, thank heavens, she's staying at 8. At 7 is the gun-wielding Sundare Bute, short in stature and in temper. Go against her and prepare to feel some pain. At 7 is Arya Holmes Kanzaki. I am actually in two minds when it comes to Arya. When she's in battle with Shinji trying to stop terrorists, she's a real badass and I can't help but like her. But when she's going through life normally, she's a bitch and becomes quite unlikable. Makes you kind of wonder why she's here, right? I know she values Shinji and appreciates his help, but would it kill her to actually show her appreciation? I don't believe she ever thanked him for all his help, which is just plain bad manners. And she treats him like crap far too often, even blaming him for things when he's clearly innocent. Which I might add is a scenario in anime that I hate. As I said, I find Arya to be at her most likable in battle, and this helps keep her from being higher on this list, but her attitude outside of Val is what keeps her from being lower. So for now, she makes 7. Coming in at 6 is the bitchy member of the Kashiwagi twins. She's got beauty and confidence, I'll give her that but her personality leaves much to be desired. Still, it's not bad enough to make me flat out hate her. At number 6 is Yuma. Whoever originally came up with the confidence is sexy mantra would most likely apply it to Yuma. I think it does fit her fairly well, but I really wish she wasn't such a bitch. It's okay to be bitchy to other people, especially if they're being bitchy to you. But screwing with your own sister? Seriously? You don't do that. Messing with her a bit I wouldn't have a problem with. But ruining her chances of being a model by writing things on her? That is just not okay. I don't think any other older twin sister does things like that. And that's one of the reasons why Yuma is number 6. That and her attitude. I think a bitch slab or two would do wonders for her. Number 5's entry is a little bit tricky since she gets shown in two forms, although she's basically the same character. I will be trying to stick to her original form however. So at number 5 is the so-called god, Haruhi Suzumiya. What is it about this girl that people like so much? She has no manners, she's bossy, she's manipulative, the list just goes on. And is she really a god? 
I happen to know someone who can open dimensions, get shish kebab without dying, and create barriers. I, for one, refuse to believe that Harahi is a god. Someone like her does not deserve that title. Now, a few years back, Harahi was actually my number one most hated anime woman. But over time, I found others who are far worse. And I will admit, there are some moments that save Haruhi from being higher. Her slight character change during Endless 8, the fact that she agreed to help her school's band, though I seriously have to question why she decided to do it in a bunny girl outfit, but most importantly, her performance in the Haruhi Chan Suzumiya spin-off. That version of Haruhi I actually find very likable. However, it's her normal self that puts her here. Because of these various things, Haruhi gets to number 5. This next chick I'm calling the Scourge of the Skies. She is a PERFECT example of how rich girls shouldn't be. Snobby and thinking everyone is below them. If I was told I'd have to serve with her, I'd hightail it out of there. At 4 is the high-flying stalker, Perrine H. Klosterman. How the fuck was she able to get away with that unauthorized duel in Season 1? Poor Yoshka got all the blame, and the fact that no one bothered to press Perrine as to why they were out training just sickens me. I seriously wish I could go into the Strike Witch's world and drive my fist into Perrine's gut, just to teach her a lesson. Yes, I know Yoshka violated orders and almost got Mio killed, but if you think about it, Perrine was just as much to blame for Mio getting hurt. If she hadn't challenged Yoshka to that duel, they wouldn't have been out there in the first place and Mia wouldn't have ended up in intensive care. Now, I will admit, Perrine does tone down slightly during Season 2, but unfortunately, she doesn't tone down enough for me to change my view of her. I still hate her guts. There is no way I will ever come to like her. Now we're getting into the real bitches of this list. The ones who seriously heck me off and who have no hope of me ever liking them. At number 3 is by far Dragon Ball Z's worst female character. I have loathed this woman for a long time. She may seem sweet, but do not let that fool you. She is a nagging, controlling bitch. Have you guessed who it is? Yes. Chi Chi. Now, I'm sure that some of you will say, Come on, she's not that bad. I disagree. Of all the main female characters, Chi Chi has done nothing for the show. Even Videl was more useful than her. Her biggest achievement? Keeping Gohan a complete pansy throughout the series. It is because of her influence that Gohan went from a badass during the Cell games to a shadow of his former self for the rest of the show. What was Goku THINKING marrying her? And of course, even though she was opposed to fighting during DBZ, she trained Goten. If that doesn't just scream contradiction, I don't know what does. In my book, Chi Chi is a terrible mother, and she gets to number three. Number two. With this girl, it was pretty much hate at first sight. Not once did I ever think she's not too bad, not even when seeing flashbacks of her as a kid. In terms of sundariness, she embodies everything I hate. She is, 
Fumino Surizawa. Now, when I did this list on a previous account, I tied Fumino with Chisei Umanomori, because both of them were as bad as each other. However, there is one thing that stops me doing that here, and I'm not referring to my strict no ties rule. What stops me is the fact that during my Yoi Neko overrun, I think it was episode 3, Chisei very nearly got in my good books. Like Fumino, I hated her after I first saw her, but when she said that her family had given her no attention for most of her life, my view on her softened up a bit. Then she went back to normal, and so did my view of her. Fumino, on the other hand, did no such thing. She is exactly the kind of sundere that I despise. All sun and little to no dore. Why she couldn't have retained at least some of her personality when she was a kid, I don't get. I know that the main guy, whose name I don't care to memorize, told her that she should toughen up, but to go as far as she did and show him no appreciation for looking out for her growing up is beyond ridiculous. Whenever I see characters like Fumino, I seriously want to reach in and throttle them. However, she's not the worst. Okay, I guess I'll do a recap of these bitches before doing number 1. Number 10, Toru Ichi. Number 9, Midori Tokiwa. Number 8, Sabako Yamanaka. Number 7, Arya Holmes Kanzaki. Number 6, Yuma Kashiwagi. Number 5, Haruhi Suzumiya. Number 4, Perrine H. Klosterman. Number 3, Chichi. And number 2, Fumino Serizawa. Okay, time for number 1. The worst of the worst. The one girl I loathe above all others. When watching Yuri Yuri, I seriously wanted to kill her. Reaching number one is Sakurako Omuro. Where do I begin? I'm going to say this right here, right now. Comedy slash slice of life anime have no place for characters like Sakurako. The whole point of those types of anime is to make people laugh and to be enjoyed. When you put characters like her in, however, things go down the toilet. Words simply do not do justice to how much I hate this. Bitch sounds too kind. Why is Hemawari friends with her? Why did she change from when she was a kid? How did I manage to finish both seasons of Yuri Yuri with not just Sakurako, but Ayano as well? Why can't Sakurako shut up for five minutes? Why can't she just act her age for once? Some of you are probably saying that Hemawari is just as bad. And at least in season one, she is. But in season two, she actually shows maturity. Sakurako never shows maturity. I doubt the word is even in her vocabulary. You know what I would love? You know what would just make my day? To see Sakurako be electrocuted by Pikachu, then have Thor hammer her into the ground, then have Shadow the Hedgehog chaos blast her, and then, just to make sure she's dead, have Master Chief put a bullet right between her eyes. That is how much I loathe Sakurako Omuro, and that's why she's number one. I finally finished. I'm sorry if I seemed to overreact with some of these girls, but that just shows how much I hate them, particularly the last two. Keep an eye out for my top 10 most hated anime guys, remember to rate, comment and subscribe, and as I always say in my videos, remember to stay chilled people.